Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Geom with Geometry, and in this video, I'm going to share with you a community project that we did at my last Family Math Night event. Now, since it was January, I thought it'd be super fun to do something with snowflakes, and so we created a snowflake quilt, and you can see the awesome quilt um, that we put together at that um, event. So I'm going to start super simply by going over how to make a paper snowflake, and then I'm going to get into the nitty gritties of the math. Okay, so um, the materials that you are going to need are um, scissors, and this is gonna be a very popular station, so you wanna have, um, however many scissors you have, that's probably how many participants you're gonna have. So I recommend between 10 and 15 pair of scissors. You're going to need some glue. You're going to need construction paper cut into eight inch by eight inch squares, and you're going to need um, some coffee filters. Now, I like to use these coffee filters because when participants flatten it out, it already has that um, circular shape um, to it. Okay, so making the, the paper um, snowflake, the first thing that they're gonna wanna do, of course, is flatten that um, coffee filter out, and then they're gonna, wanna, they're gonna wanna fold it in half just like that, okay? Uh, we could get into a little fraction work here, whereas um, this is one of the two equal pieces needed to make that whole circle. Okay, so now what they're gonna do is they're gonna fold it in half again, but only for the purpose of creating a little crease right down here at the bottom, okay? So they don't need to fold it all the way across. They just wanna create that crease down there, um, right there. Now, if you want, you can have them get a pencil and mark that crease. Um, I'm gonna mark it here for you so that you can easily see it, okay, right there. Now, they're gonna use that, that crease, okay, that point, um, to create their next um, fold, and that is folding it into thirds. Again, some more fraction work here. So their parents are helping them, especially those little guys. So they're gonna come up and they're really just gonna eyeball it, okay, and fold it as best as they can into three, okay, equal pieces there. Again, your fractions, one third, two thirds, and three thirds. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be totally perfect, but you know, the closer you can get, the better. Um, so there you have it, and then they're gonna flatten this out. And now I recommend that um, um, when they cut, they cut from corner, okay, corner here to corner there. And the reason why I do that is because when they open up this snowflake, it's going to be easier for them um, to count six points. On that now it's they don't it's not necessary that they go corner to corner um, again I just like them to be able to count those points easily okay so I just cut that out you can say corner to corner and then if you want to um, they can cut um, around these sides as well so I'll do a little cut there I'll do a, another cut right here and maybe a little one down here at the bottom All right, just like that. So there we go. So now this is the best part. They love this. In fact, I really love this too. This is where they open it up and they get to see what they created. It's super fun. Okay. And so there you have it. It's a beautiful snowflake. And again, you can count those one, two, three, four, five, six points really easily. Okay, so at this point, what happens is they're going to take that construction paper and they're going to glue it on. They do not need to use a lot of glue. In fact, I recommend that they glue the tips only. It doesn't need to be totally flat. I kind of like it when it um, gives that little three, 3D effect. They can write the names, their name on the bottom um, if they like. And then you can decide at this point whether or not you want to um, collect all of these and put the quilt together later. But I like to actually build the quilt during the event. They can go up and they can put their um, snowflake and add it to the quilt. Um, it's kind of fun to watch it um, grow. And then at the end of the evening when everybody's leaving, they get to see this um, awesome um, creation that they put together. So, oh, and this looks really good um, hanging up in the front office as well. Okay, so that's how to make up the paper snowflake. Now we're gonna get into the math of a snowflake. And in order to get into the math of a snowflake, we're gonna have to get, we have to talk a little bit about the um, anatomy of a snowflake. Um, a snowflake is an ice crystal, and we know that ice crystals are made up of um, water molecules. 
And if you've ever said H2O, then you know that a water molecule is made up of two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen um, atom. Now, this is a very, very simple um, explanation of something that's a little bit more complicated than this. Um, but, um, but very simplified. You can see how I deliberately drew those atoms on there. Now, this is two-dimensional. I'm going to show you this kind of represented three-dimensionally. Um, it looks like that. So you've got your two hydrogens on there and your little oxygen molecule. And you can see it kind of takes the shape of a triangle, which is why I created that triangle there. Now, whenever you're dealing with nature, nature always does things in the mo most efficient way possible and the most stable way possible. So when these ice crystals are forming, the most stable way for them to, to form, to chemically bond, is... Um, to have is, is by having six water molecules uh, bond together and when they do that they form the shape of a hexagon okay so you can see these water molecules are on there again very very sim simplified um, explanation of this but it kind of gives you the gist of it okay so if you want to um, actually there's a website called snowcrystals.com um, they have um, a couple of um, amazing photo galleries of stunningly beautiful uh, snowflakes, which clearly illustrate the hexagon in the center there. And then what happens as the ice crystal is building out, it grows in um, an orderly um, and regular pattern. And you can see that um, the hexagon has six sides, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's gonna grow out. Um, in those size in, in six sides so I highly recommend going and looking at some of those photographs because they really are very beautiful okay so um, so uh, as the as the the crystal is is growing out in that pattern um, one of the things that so beautiful about that as well is that it's very very symmetrical and so symmetrical means that um, it has lines of symmetry that if you fold it along that line of symmetry, like I'll fold it on one of these lines of symmetry, um, both halves are identical, okay? They exactly match. Um, now, the snowflake that we just made um, has, um, if you look at the folds on there, you can see three lines of symmetry on there. So I'm gonna take this and I'll fold it on top of each other like that on one of those lines of symmetry, and you can see how it folds over exactly like that. Um, so it has, and I could open it up and fold it on the next line, and the same thing would happen, and so forth. So, um, so this technically is not a real snowflake because real snowflakes have six lines, exactly six lines of symmetry. And when you have six lines of symmetry, it looks something like this. Now, this looks like an awful lot of lines on here, um, but we're going to count them. Okay, there's one line of symmetry, two three, four, five, and then this last one here is six, and then we're back to the beginning. So you can see that this does have six lines of symmetry, and if I fold it on any one of those lines, it's going to exactly match. So why did I not have you create um, a snowflake earlier that had six lines um, of symmetry, like a true snowflake does? Well, I did that because it's easier for little guys to work with um, this size. Um, and when they do it corner to corner, um, as you notice, you can easily count the six points on that. It's really not the six sides of a, of a snowflake, but they do count the six points of that. And I kind of just leave it um, at that. The older kids, okay, so at our family math line events, we have each station has a beginning, an intermediate, and advanced level. So if you wanted to do something like that uh, with this snowflake station, you could do that. So you could have your older kids actually create um, um, accurate snowflakes by creating the six lines of symmetry. So how do you do that? Well, you go to this point here, and then, and I would actually ask students, what would happen? How many lines of symmetry do you think you would have if you folded it in half one more time? Then they can make their predictions, and then they can unfold it, and they can see that what happens is they end up with their six lines of symmetry. They can count those six lines of symmetry there. So, so we're gonna. I'm gonna go back and fold this one. I'm gonna use one that I've already got folded here. Okay, 
And I'm going to do the same thing. This is going to make an accurate snowflake. So I've got it folded now, my six fold symmetry. And I'm going to go corner to corner again. Now, um, there, this isn't technically um, a, an accurate snowflake because when ice crystals are forming, they're actually, they actually form in angles, okay? Okay, straight edges like that. So there are no curves in real snowflakes. Um, if I was doing this with upper elementary students in the classroom, I would have them create um, a bunch of really fun snowflakes. I'd just let them have at it and just create some fun ones. And then I would have them create um, one snowflake, at least one snowflake, that was um, mathematically and scientifically accurate. So I would have them create a six-fold snowflake that was made up all of lines. Okay, so here we've got um, my snowflake, and I'm going to open it up, and because it's close to Valentine's Day, you'll see I created some hearts on here. Oop, there they are, my little hearts. Okay, super cute. Okay, and so now this is, um, except for the, the straight edges or the curved lines, um, this is a more accurate snowflake. And then you've got your one, two, three, four, five, six sides of that, your six fold symmetry, six lines of symmetry. So um, not only are snowflakes, um, do snowflakes have um, six fold symmetry, they also have something called rotational symmetry. So rotational symmetry is when you, um, take something like this and you rotate it less than 360 degrees and it falls exactly on itself again. So what do I mean by that? Okay, um, I'm gonna show you that, um, well, this is an example of the three lines of symmetry um, snowflake that, that we did earlier. Okay, not an actual snowflake, but this three lines of symmetry um, snowflake has 120 degree rotational symmetry, which means I could rotate this snowflake and three times and it would land exactly on itself. A circle has 360 degrees, so 360 divided by three is 120 degree rotational symmetry. Let me show you um, something that I put together to make it a little bit easier to illustrate. Okay, so I tried to create two snowflakes that were obviously very, very simple, but um, that were almost identical there. And you can see that I've got my 120 degrees <clears throat> angle right there, but let me rotate this. Oops, it's my pin is coming out. Let me rotate this so that you can see, and we're gonna count how many times it takes before it gets back to this, this um, position. So I'm gonna rotate it and it's gonna land on itself Okay, once, twice, and now we're back to the beginning. Three, oops, did I, go, did I overshoot it? Three times. So again, uh, 360 divided by three is 360, is, is 120 degree rotational symmetry. Um, to show you those angles, I actually created one like this so you can see those three 120 degree angles. Now a real snowflake has 60 degree rotational symmetry. So I tried to create this one here for you as well, okay? So this is a six fold snowflake and we're gonna count how many times this goes around on itself. It exactly matches one, two, three, four, five, six, back to the beginning. 360 divided by six is 60 degrees. Now you can actually have um, your um, upper elementary students use a protractor and measure those angles there and they'll see that it's 60 degrees. In fact, the Common Core State Standards of Mathematics in fourth grade and above, um, students need to be savvy with a um, a protractor. So this is the perfect opportunity to um, teach them how to use a protractor. It's kind of fun because they're doing a snowflake activity. 
Um, so while we have the protractor, I'm going to show you something else too that you could do um, if you lay this out at your family math night with the beginning, intermediate, and advanced. You could do this at your advanced level as well. And they would certainly do it in the classroom with upper elementary students. Okay, so way back in the beginning when we folded this like this, and then I said, okay, well, let's fold it in half, and we're going to make a little point right here. And we're going to use that point to create our thirds, okay? Um, I'm going to show you how to have students create those three um, sections where each angle is exactly the same. So your perfect thirds there. So I'd actually pose the question to students. Um, you know that there is 360 degrees in a circle, okay? Half of that is, half of 360 is 120 degrees right or 180 180 degrees okay uh, 100 this is actually an angle we could have a ray going off in that direction and a ray going off in this direction forever and ever and that's a um, it's a uh, 180 degree angle is a straight line right so if we wanted to make this into um, three sections with the exact same angle measurement um, how would we figure that out and of course um, you could have them work in little groups and or partners or whatever and they could figure that out and they they can share it on they may need a little help along the way but eventually someone's going to say um, well if you take that and you divide it into three so 180 divided by three is 60. so you're going to need to make um, three angles here that are 60 degrees so how do you do that well you're going to take this and you're going to use your protractor and you're going to stick the little um, circle part right there, right on that midpoint. Oh, and that was the other word I forgot. Okay, the midpoint of this line. So a little vocabulary, geometry vocabulary there. Okay, so I'm going to assume that most uh, students at this point know how to use the protractor. If not, you're going to need to back up and do that first. But once they know how to make the pro, the, oh, I'm doing this the wrong way. Once they um, know how to use the protractor, I need to do it so you can see it. Um, then they can mark on here 60 degrees and 120, or 60 and 120, however they want to do it. And when they've marked it, it's going to look like this, right? And then at this point, they need to connect the dots, and they're going to end up with that. And they can measure, and sure enough, each one of these angles down here is going to measure um, 60 degrees, and then they can make their folds on that perfect thirds right there, beautiful. Okay. Um, so the last thing that I want to talk to you about is another project that you could do that uses this idea. Um, a teacher at the last Family Math Night that I did approached me and she talked to me about something that she did with her second graders um, in the spring during her bug unit. Um, she had her second graders create spider webs. In fact, this is the spider web that she created for me that night. Um, so thank you, Helma, for this awesome idea. But okay, so here's the spider web. And then she has these little plastic spiders and she glues them on here. How cute is that? Um, and then of course she displays them. So I'm gonna show you how to do this and how she showed me how to do that. I'm gonna cut, you're gonna take um, the coffee filter and you're gonna fold it so that you end up with a six fold, you're, like, like you're gonna be making a six fold um, snowflake and then you're going to cut rectangles out of it kind of like i did right here see that okay um and then when you open that up you're going to end up with your spider web very cool love that love that now what if i had taken that six fold um that six fold and i cut it like this what if i did rectangles on this side and rectangles on that side. If I unfolded this, would it turn out to look like a spider web as well? So I'm just gonna put that out there to you and your students to see what this one turns out to look like. Um, okay, so there you have um, a great um, community project um, for a family math night event. Everybody gets to participate and everybody gets to share and it looks awesome at the end. And then a little twist on that, um, something that you could do um, during your bug unit or maybe a Halloween, you know, in the fall and do it at, at Halloween. Um, and then we talked a lot about the math that's involved in this. So uh, there's a lot going on here, but it's really a lot. Um, going on around a super fun project that kids really get into. So have fun.